Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on detecting outliers using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to conduct some sort of parametric statistic. And one of the assumptions for several parametric statistics is that there are no outliers. So I have fictitious data loaded in the data editor here in SPSS. And of interest would be this variable symptoms. And you can see this is a continuous variable. And in a situation like this where we have program and symptoms, see program is our independent variable, it has three levels, and symptoms would be our dependent variable, perhaps we want to conduct an ANOVA. But before we could do that, we'd have to check for the assumptions for ANOVA, and one of those would be that there are no outliers in this dependent variable symptoms. So to check for outliers, I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and explore. And this is what the explore dialog looks like by default. I'm just going to move symptoms into the dependent list list box because it is a dependent variable. And then under statistics, descriptives are checked off by default. I'm going to add outliers. I'm going to check off outliers and I'm going to check off percentiles and click continue. Under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf and click continue and under options I'm going to make no changes. So now we're ready to conduct the check for outliers. I'll click OK and starting at the top here with the case processing summary we can see we had 45 observations in this variable symptoms and no missing values. In descriptives we have a lot of information provided the mean, the median, the standard deviation but of interest here is going to be the interquartile range. This is also referred to as the IQR, interquartile range. And notice the value here is 8. To understand what the interquartile range is, you need to understand how it relates to percentiles. And that's the next table here. And you can see that we have two types, weighted average and two keys hinges. In this case, of interest would be the 25th percentile, also known as Q1, and the 75th percentile, also known as Q3. And you'll notice the value for the 25th percentile for both the weighted average and two keys hinges is 47. And for the 75th percentile, or Q3, it's 55. Q3 minus Q1 is the interquartile range. So 55 minus 47 is 8, and that's how we get 8 up here for the interquartile range. So moving down to the box plot, we can see that SPSS has identified two outliers. Record 7, which is indicated with a star, and record 13, which is indicated with a circle. And they're both above the top whisker of the box plot. So to understand what this means, we're going to go back to the concept of the interquartile range. Remember the interquartile range had a value of 8, and that's the difference between the 75th and 25th percentile, which would be the top of this rectangle and the bottom of this rectangle. The top represents the 75th percentile, and the bottom line, the bottom of the rectangle, represents the 25th percentile. In order for a value to be considered an outlier using this method, using the interquartile range, we take the interquartile range and multiply it by 1.5. So the interquartile range is 8, so multiply that by 1.5, and now we have a value of 12. We take that value of 12, and if we move back up here to percentiles, we add it to the 75th percentile, and we subtract it from the 25th percentile. So adding it to the 75th percentile gives us a value of 67. So any value greater than 67 is going to be an outlier. If we subtract it from the 25th percentile, that gives us 35. So any value below 35 will also be an outlier. So moving back to the box plot, we can see that we have record 13 and record 7. If we move back to the data editor, we can see that record 13 is 72, that's above 67, and record 7 is 89, which is above 67. 
Now in this example, of, of course, both our outliers are above this top whisker. And this top whisker represents the highest value in the variable, not including outliers. The bottom whisker represents the lowest value in the variable, not including outliers. So then the question is, why do we have a circle for record 13 and a star for record seven? Remember 13 had a value of 72 and seven, record seven had a value of 89. Both exceed 67. So we can think of record 13, the value 72, the observation 72. We could think of that as a mild outlier. And we can think of record seven, the value 89, as an extreme outlier. And to understand this distinction, again, I'm gonna move back to this concept of the interquartile range. So we know for a value to be considered an outlier in this particular variable, the score would have to be greater than 67 or less than 35. So 12 added to 55 and 12 subtracted from 47. For a value to be considered an extreme outlier, we use a different calculation instead of multiplying the interquartile range by 1.5, which gave us 12, we multiply the interquartile range by three, which gives us 24. And again, that 24, that value of 24 is added to the 75th percentile, which will give us 79. And it's subtracted from the 25th percentile, which gives us 23. So a value would have to be below 23 or above 79 to be considered an extreme outlier. In this case, our extreme outlier is case number seven, record seven, and that is 89, which is of course above 79. So that's why this value of 89 is an extreme outlier, and the value 72, record 13, is a mild outlier. So then the question becomes, what do we do with outliers? For example, in this case, we have no outliers toward the bottom end. The lowest value here is not considered an outlier, but toward the top end, we have two outliers. Well, there are a few options to explore when you have outliers like these. So taking a look back at the data editor and these values, let's assume that these values are converted scores from an instrument that's designed to measure symptoms. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure this is an accurate observation. The 72 and 89 are both accurate observations. It did not occur through some error or the data being miskeyed, we wanna make sure these are legitimate values. For example, perhaps with this instrument, the maximum score is 80. So we would know that 89 is some sort of error. If we determine that these scores are legitimate, then we can use a data transformation. I have several videos on data transformation to try to eliminate the outliers that way. The statistics are performed using a transformed variable instead of the values in this original variable. For example, a log 10 transformation or a square root transformation. If a transformation doesn't yield satisfactory results, you can switch and use a non-parametric statistic. Now, non-parametric statistics do not have a no outliers requirement, but you do lose statistical power, meaning the ability to detect a difference that's truly there. Parametric statistics have more statistical power than non-parametric statistics. So that would certainly be one of the factors you'd want to consider in selecting the correct statistic. I hope you found this video on detecting outliers in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.